Zimbabwean President Emerson Mnangagwa has appointed retired army boss Constantino Chibwenga and veteran politician Kembo Mohadi as the ruling party's vice presidents. The appointments made on Saturday pave way for the two to ascend to similar positions in government. Chiwenga, who retired from the army on Monday, is the latest in a string of senior military figures appointed by Mnangagwa to important political posts. Presidential spokesman George Charamba said the appointments could only be made by the chief secretary to the government and cabinet, Mishek Sibanda, who is out of the country. Mnangagwa took over last month from 93-year-old Robert Mugabe after the intervention of the military. To get more on this, we're joined live by CGTN's Angelo Coppola from Johannesburg. Angelo, General Chiwenga has been appointed vice president of the ruling ZANU PF party. Is this a kind of a build up before he is named the country's vice president? Well, the consensus view, Panina, is that the next stage in this legal process is to officially appoint him as the vice president of the country. And it's really seen as a rubber stamping exercise. It's also seen as a fait accompli by most analysts that we've spoken to late this afternoon. And it's probably more importantly seen as a reward for the general's efforts in bringing out the military onto the streets of Harare uh, uh, earlier last month, in fact, to pressure Mugabe to retire at least semi-gracefully. So it appears that Zimbabwe will have a new vice president or two as soon as that chief secretary does return to the country. But at the moment, we don't know when exactly that's going to be. Pan Panina? And Angelo, we are now seeing some Zimbabweans who had fled the country returning. Is this a sign that more will return, including those living in South Africa? Well, while some Zimbabweans are returning, many who have made their lives here in South Africa have told us that they plan to stay in the country. Those we spoke to who wanted to return because they weren't really bet any better off in South Africa have said they'll only move when they see jobs being created and manu the manufacturing sector businesses and factories start operating again. They're adopting a wait-and-see attitude at the moment. The context here, of course, is that it's still early days for Manangagwa's uh, presidency and he's going to have to move fast if he wants to retain power at the country's next election. So it all rests and depends on what Manangagwa does next in terms of actions, Penina. Right, and Angelo, just looking at things, first, it was the political situation that needed to be fixed, but the economy is in pretty bad shape from his recent visit to South Africa. What kind of help will President Mnangagwa get from South Africa to get the country back on track? Well, as you know, Manangagwe was in South Africa late last week to hold discussions with President Zuma and several government ministers here. Um, he also did meet with a large group of local and Zimbabwean business people at the uh, Zimbabwean embassy, and he, he talked about the plans that he has to reignite Zimbabwe's economy. South Africa and Zimbabwe, as you know, have a very solid relationship, and there are currently about 40 broad bilateral agreements between the two countries which touch on the social issues and also the harder economic issues. Analysts say that if Managagwa can implement some of the changes he's spoken about, specifically in relaxing that indigenization rule for foreign ownership in, in Zimbabwean companies and getting the agricultural sector back on track, he's likely to find heightened South African interests. South Africa, of course, is also providing Zimbabwe with electricity, and some say that the government could ease those repayment terms as Zimbabwe gets back on its feet economically. So there is something that South Africa can do, but we're going to have to wait and see how that plays out. Panina? All right, Angela, thank you so much for joining us. Angela Coppola, live for us in Johannesburg.